Um, the second talk is by um, Chiru from ISC, and he asked me to introduce him as just Chiru from ISC. Good morning, everybody. So first, let me thank the organizers for inv inviting me to speak. Um, so pardon me for the title. It wouldn't be as boring as what it seems. So we're going to talk about uh, text analytics uh, in a big data setting. And I think the previous talk clearly summed up why, in nutshell, startups will come up out of analytics and big data, et cetera, right? So, we, so this talk, we are going to talk about an interesting problem in text analytics, that of extracting topics from a large document collection. And I was happy to hear the words like unsupervised learning, et cetera. So this would be another example of unsupervised learning. So, so this is a picture of what? Anybody, any guess? Uh, let's not. I just tend to make sure that you're not asleep. <laughs> so, yeah, jokingly you can say this is the picture of uh, papers on my desk after the examination. No, I was joking. I scraped it from internet somewhere. So imagine this is a common sight in most of our desks, especially if you unorganized people like me. So one of us, often one thinks, right, if, if there was a tool which could help organize these things, you know, in unsupervised fashion, won't it be good, you know? So, so the main challenge is that, the, the main challenge is, okay, one good thing to organize it, okay, hire, get 10 guys, and oh, each of you look at the paper, and put it in this bucket, that bucket, that bucket, right? So that's not going to, that's not possible. You want an automatic scheme, and that's hard. And, and so there are two reasons, uh, or the two dimensions of this problem. First of all, what are the methodologies you want to deploy for such a problem? That also not, we are not very clear, it's an emerging theme. And the methodologies which we currently have are severely challenged if the number of documents are quite large. So what can we do? And this is being, uh, I mean, this is one of, I would say, if text is, if a lot of data is in text, and this is the, I mean, today's challenge for sure. So topic models is a very interesting attempt at this problem. So these models uh, uh, attempt to discover hidden themes in document collections. Uh, we, in a minute, we'll try to make this more clear. Now, if you have some hidden, th if you understand the themes in a document, you can use them to label them, automatically tag them, right? And once you have tagged them, you know, then you can, uh, then you can use those tags to do, you know, browsing, you know, searching, uh, and, and storing them efficiently, et cetera, right? So, 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 and, so and, and these models do not require supervision. So given so many advantages, that is why this has almost, I mean, my colleagues in Google and Yahoo tell me that this is, goes into their back end. I have, uh, except the anecdotal evidence, I can't tell you what's going on there, because they don't work there. But this has been now industry standard uh, in, uh, in organizing large text collections. So, so just to set some example, uh, like just to set some definitions right. So what are topics? So suppose I tell you, I show you a document on which you see these following words, like run, innings, hit, season, game. Any idea what the document could be? Baseball. Sports, baseball, and cricket. So now, if I say the document of, I came out in New York Times. <laughs> oh, you saw so, so basically, this is, uh, you know, one can say baseball or cricket. If, if it was Times, it could as well be Times of India, then it would be cricket or whatever. Right? So, so the main idea is that just knowing these few words, you get idea, okay, this could be about cricket or baseball. So that's what you are talking about here, right? So, so for example, I mean, you know, if you run such models, uh, topic models over, uh, you know, uh, say some data set, maybe in this case, you're running a New York Times data set. So, so obviously, you can see the first five words uh, of this run, inning, hit, season, game. We talked about it. That's more like baseball. The second one could be, you know, uh, I mean, uh, about cooking, and then there is this patient, drug, doctor, cancer, medical. Of course, you're talking about something about healthcare, right? So can you automatically extract them? That is the main idea, sort of. Right? So now as you see, these are very interesting and useful 
thing. So people have built some topic models. Here's one great example, which I find yeah, is advertisement for topic models. I mean, I'm not sure how much of it is used. So imagine Wikipedia, right? I want to browse Wikipedia. So what you can do is you can take the entire Wikipedia dump, run through topic models. So you can see, I don't, I'm not sure if you can read those words. Can you read those things? Household, population, female, family, median, right? So, so this is, this is a, like, these are the words I'm finding. Right, there's another set of words, let's say, war, force, army, attack, military, something with military things. Now, so for example, in this particular case, uh, uh, if you, so these are basically some topics you are defining. Topics are now, as I'm saying, collection of words now, which are, which, which appear, you know, co-occur heavily, right? So if you go and click there, you know, uh, you'll see the following documents, these are document titles coming up. So this is a great, now you want to say, okay, I am, I've come to a particular document, I want to see related topics, so I can go township, household, population, that's defines another topic. So this gives you a very easy way of browsing large document category, just to show one use. But, uh, you know, but now effectively all backend search is now driven by these topic models that uh, people from uh, industrial search companies can tell us better. So having convinced you that these are, you know, great tools, now let us see how can I learn them, how can I find them? So that's the, that's the subject of this talk. So we briefly talked about what are topic models. Now we'll introduce you to a very you, uh, a classic technique called latent semantic indexing where this is started. And then we'll talk, then if you get time, we'll actually talk about what I mean by learning topics from finite sample, number of sample complexities. This is our recent work with Professor Ravi Kannan and Trapit. So that's the outline. So, so basically all this started in 1960s and when the first shoot, first notion of topics, uh, sorry, documents started emerging, document collections. So at that point people said, okay, uh, I have a collection of documents uh, and documents, a collection of words, etc. I have this model. Now, the main thing is, can I find information? What is information? Now I'll say, I'll ask, I'll, I'll maybe ask a question and you have to answer this there, right? I'll give you some keywords and you have to find me the nearest documents. So at that point, the formulation was, I give you a document, find me the closest documents. This is 1970s, you know. So then, so, so then people uh, then came up with this model, which are called vector space models. So what, so what is, they said, that, like, let's do the following thing. Let us encode the, in each document, the presence or absence of a word. For each document, then I can represent by a vector. And then you look at your query, that also can represent by another vector. Then try to see which, which documents are closer to that query and return it back to you. This is, this is what I will call as keyword search. Now, very soon, people found that this works sometime, but not always. So if I'm looking for example is, my favorite example is, if I'm looking for something like Jaguar, J-A-G-U-A-R, Jaguar. Now, it can be Jaguar the car or Jaguar the animal? It's not very clear, right, just from that word, right? Then if you say Jaguar adventure, and say uh, Jaguar fast speed, you know, I mean, so, so this co-occurs helps, right? And then, uh, so sometimes these are not so apparent just by words. One can, one can have, okay, people can write the same word. There are uh, words with uh, same meaning, different words. That can always happen. So all kinds of things came into play, right? So at that point, people came up with this interesting idea that vector space models are, may not be that good, so they came up with this very interesting idea of latent semantic indexing. And that completely outperformed this keyword search. So let's look at it very quickly to set the tone for this talk. So we'll, as we discussed, uh, for us, you know, the data is document collection. We'll encode the data as a matrix, and here is where math comes in, that's what we know. So, so, so here let's assume that each document is a column. I'm sorry to do this in the morning. So each, each document is a column, and uh, each row in the column is a word. Now what you fill in the row it can be depending on what models you have. For example, the vector space model, you can fill in the absence or presence of a word. Or you can count the number of words if you wish, right? 
right? So, uh, um, so for example, uh, so let's say that I've counted number of words and, and divided them by total number of words. So total number of words is 100 and there are nine words. Uh, um, the first word is a 0 0.09 and all that, right? So the sum of them should be one, something like that. We can do other things also, right? So finally, we're given a document matrix. So the corpus are encoded in a matrix, eh? Right? So then people found is that, okay, there is this interesting tool called, uh, from mathematics, linear algebra, called single hello decomposition. What you do is you write this matrix into a factorization, MDS, there are three matrices, right? And now, so, so remember, each column of A is a document, right? So you can see each column can be written as something like AI into some matrix into SI. But SI and I, I'll think about is a new representation of this document. Okay, so now what I do is now a query word, a, a query word Q is given to me. You know? So what I do is I project the query into this, using this MD by this formula, and then I compute a similarity score uh, between Q and AI. Q is the query document and AI is the the I document in my data sets. So now, what I can do is, if this number is high, then AI is close to Q. This is very similar. I'll take this argument. Now I can use the score for each query. I'll, I'll, I can use the score for all the documents in the corpus and return to you the closest ones. Now this completely outperformed the keyword search. Okay. So now, by keyword search, I mean the skew transpose AI. That is the main thing, if you want, mathematically. So, so as I said, right? So, people are wondering, is this working well? But why? Why should it work well? I mean, what did I do? I mean, just because you no know, linear algebra, I knew the tool, I ran it. Why? So this was the thing, right? So maybe then so maybe the matrix M is encoding something to semantics. Maybe it, it, was, it was projecting, when you say we're projecting the documents in the columns of M, see there's some way the words, so it is not really aligned along each word. It's a direction which is mixing up two, three words, right? So maybe this is catching semantic. This is what they're thinking. Yet, see this is 1998. So people were applying it, using it, no, one, no understanding. Now, as you said, 30 years, right? This took 10 years. 10 years later, there's a very interesting paper came up a classic paper, which tried to explain this. Why does it work? So now, so then said, okay, maybe what you should do, that each topic, sorry, each document has a notion called topic. We'll define it in a moment, right? So, and if each topic has some very few words, that is, you take the A matrix, the M matrix, right? M matrix, you have this uh, words, uh, all this cricket, uh, what, what would you, you show, no? Bat, inning, season, game, etc. And you see there's a large fraction of the probability mass is sitting on those words. That is, those numbers are very high, okay? In such a case, we can probably show that the keyword search will be outperformed by this. And that was a great explanation. And of course, there's a mini math here, right? So essentially, this gives a very interesting idea. So then topic is nothing but a probability distribution over words. This is the first time this sense came out. Right? So, so what is the document now? So document is nothing but maybe uh, I am rolling a dice with D number of faces, where D is the vocabulary, M, M draws, you know? And each time a word shows up, I just put it in document. So under that model, in you know, all this, uh, was, or, or, like all this is true. So I have eight minutes, so let me speed up. So sorry. Now, now, now the question is, this is 2000, right? People understood, great. But what are the assumption they made? They said each document has only one topic. There was assumption, right? We flashed one slide. Each document is about one topic, right? That is, that is, that is each draw is from one distribution. Now the question became is that, okay, so now here is a paper. You know, we saw art and computer science. Obviously this LSI is not going to work here. So people have, as we got, you know, as we were trying to apply LSI, they quickly, quickly found out that, okay, this is breaking down in these places. So we need to have models which can go beyond that, which can handle multiple topics 
in a single document. So, so for example, uh, you know, uh, let's, let's not get political here, but let's say, let's say there's a document, we are talking about Orange Jetly, we are talking about Chidambaram, uh, uh, we are talking about BCCI. See, they are both on the BCCI board. We're talking about corruption here. So this document, I mean, this is a document which comes out. Right? This is our BCCI scandal. See, but here, they are not on opposing sides. Correct? So it's about cricket, it's about politics, it's also about corruption, right? So LSI will not be able to handle this. Correct? So now, what do we do? So this is a very interesting open question. And now, in came a, a very fantastic answer in 2002, where they actually took the idea of probabilistic, that the topic is a probability, and they tried to fit an actually a full generative model of a document. I mean, a very complex model. I will not have time because I'm racing against that. It's five minutes. So, so we'll just say that LDA is a great tool, but it's a pretty probabilistic, okay? So now, so here's a tool, and here's what LDA can do. So they built a model of science, that is they've taken the science magazine over the last 100 years. They just took this on the data set, they ran this model. So it's discovering, you know, so they tracked how those topics will change. So for example, you see 1960, it's a sea, water, fish, marine oceans. What is it? Something to marine science, right? Some marine, marine uh, you know, uh, marine biology. So how that topic has evolved, you know, just to give you another example, how you can visualize, you know, large document collection. So I don't spend much time on this. So essentially, the idea is this. So the, so the main idea was that, okay, LSI, great tool, but it can only handle one topic per document. And we say have a new tool, which can do multiple things. So what does it do? It says that, okay, for example, assume there are only two words in a topic, just to have a visualization. So now, so let us put some weights on these. So this is, you can find out that, so suppose there are three topics. So you can put it as a triangle. And now what it is doing is, what the LDA new topic is doing is, is putting some weights here, putting some weight there, and putting some weight there. And trying to add a linear combination of that. That is, it's trying to find out a point inside the triangle. And that's a new distribution now. And now they're drawing, the, drawing documents according to that distribution. Okay? So, this, so that, that usually gives them the idea of, or the flexibility to handle multiple topics per document. Okay? So obviously, on the flip side, great, great to explain. But from a theoretical computer science, it's nightmare. Everything is NP-hard. Everything in the sense that, okay, I give you a document, tell me which, which topics are there, NP-hard. How will I find topics from a large document corpora, NP-hard? Okay, but, but these guys who designed it, you know, so they, they gave uh, MCMC techniques, Markov chain Monte Carlo techniques, which, have, which, are, which doesn't have guarantees, but works fabulously well. And this is by far now is the industry standard. I mean, this is used heavily. David's quote. So, so now, so of late is that so given the importance of this, so of late there's been interest in understanding that. Okay, can we do better? Can we do? Can we develop algorithms where we can guarantee that if there's a topic, I'll find it, and will not be stuck by this NPR assumption. Right? So, so that is this recent interest, and that's where our results were. So, 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 so basically what, what, I mean, what is the recent last two, three years this is happening? So basically, as we now saw, that M is a matrix, each column is a topic, and you're putting weights on them, right? And the weights are random. So given an M matrix, you're randomly putting weights on them, you, you generate a new document, new distribution. Or well, distribution, you generate a document. This you do it many, many times. Remember, each time the weights are changing, right? But if I show you enough documents, M is not changing, right? So probably I can still be able to guess M. So that's the main idea, right? So now, often this is not always possible until you make assumptions on M. So I will. Uh, quickly point out. So this is a breakthrough paper, a phenomenal breakthrough. What they said was that, okay, if you assume that an M matrix, right, each column of M, so column means each is there's a word, right? If there is a word which occurs in no other topic, but occurs only on that topic. For example, if you see there's a word bat happening, 
And bat can only mean, of course, forget, forget, the, forget the animal, but say bat only happens if I'm looking at only sports, let's say. So if I see the word bat, it must mean cricket. So the probability of occurring, uh, of bat occurring in any other topics is zero, right? So I can, so you can use that to anchor, the, is it like a signature word? If a moment I see this, I know cricket has occurred. That, that, that particular topic has occurred, right? So using that and some clever mathematical tools, you know, uh, Zaroda and all that gave a fabulous uh, algorithm, which has this kind of sample complexity. Now, thing to notice, so they conjectured that you have to go beyond SVD, right? Because SVD, LSI was SVD. It can only do one topic, right? Remember, LSI was SVD based, you can only do one topic, right? So they argued that, okay, we have to go, we have to do other things and all that going beyond SVD. Now I have exactly one minute, so I'll tell you our result. So, uh, few minutes more? Okay. I'm not sure the audience will like it, but, okay. So let's see, let's put the result and then we'll see, we'll take some questions. So our result is, we make some assumptions, we'll not tell you what, but assumptions are weaker than the previous ones. What do you suggest is do some thresholding, do SVD, and I can beat your sample complexity. And that's our result. I mean, so if you want to hear that, we can be happy to talk about for another 20, 20, 30 minutes. And I think I'll, I'll stop here and take questions. Yes. Hi, uh, I'm Venkatesh from IIIT Delhi. Sure. Uh, so I've been studying these topic models and uh, it's interesting uh, that we can uh, use co-occurrence and try to figure out some semantic value out of the documents. And as you say, it's quite reasonable that uh, it helps in search and other kind of applications. Mm -hmm. But I wonder how interesting are these topics and how do you make these topics interesting? Ultimately, there is a manual intervention for labeling these topics, right? So. So you have these five words, and from that you said it's either baseball or cricket or whatever, right? So the systems may not come up with such interesting topics. It might just find another term which is not so interesting for labeling that topic. What do you do? So your question is that if I run it on a general corpora, I may not get good topics uh, per se. So topic modeling has issues. One of the issues is that uh, currently that if I do not set the number of topics correct, I may get topics which have garbled words, okay? So some amount of hand tuning is needed to that effect. So we are not there the full, full, uh, you know, the whole things. And so this is clearly a very evolving research area. But the interesting point is the example which I showed, two examples I showed, Wikipedia and science. Proven examples on large document collection, it is giving good results. Right, so, often, so which basically means that if, okay, if you randomly take some, you know, collection of documents, I may not be able to find out the topics may not, may not become coherent, okay? But, but probably if the documents have some link, there are indeed some topics, right? The LDM model, you know, does discover some things. And for example, now the new results, our result or our result, you know, now are trying to get, can, can tell you more precisely that if the document has these characteristics, we can be able to find them. So that, that's happening. So it's clearly this is going to be dominating the, uh, the field for some time now. Thanks. Right. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Uh, just a small question. Uh, sure. You said uh, about your result that you use some kind of thresholding followed yes. by SVD. Yes. Uh, is it, do you mean uh, thresholding on the columns of that matrix or something? So, so what you do is, data is A matrix, right? Data will given to us is A matrix. From that I have to do whatever I have to do. Nobody will give me M, right? So what we do is I take the A matrix and do some thresholding operation. Remember the LSI, original LSI was, you factorize the A matrix by SVD. And that took them where they took them, right? So now we are just suggesting, under some assumptions, that you threshold the A matrix, 
then apply SVD, then I'll then also do have to do some K means clustering and it gives me the M matrix. Uh, is there any intuition why this okay, works? Okay, so intuition is another 10 minutes. Okay, so basically, okay, the idea is okay, let me spend that since Satish said I can take some more time. So we make this interesting assumption which uh, we defer. So first thing to note is, uh, so this I'm okay, I can I take a few more minutes? Okay, uh, so, okay. so let me bore you with some details. So you see, uh, so here is an interesting parameter called P naught. P naught is what they said is that the word bat, the probability of the word bat occurring, and the word bat occurs only in that particular topic and in, in, anywhere else, right? So it's P0 to the power 6 is the denominator. That's what Aurora's result is. S is number of samples I need to recover an M hat, which is very epsilon close to the original topic matrix, right? So this is horribly, this is a horrible thing, right? Sort of, okay. So now, we make a sort of a different assumption. So the assumption we make is as follows. And it is in, light, in line with the LSI assumption. What we assume is, maybe the BCC example is a good topic, good uh, document to think about. It may have politics, it may have corruption, it may have cricket administration, but fundamentally it must be about cricket. And this topic should dominate it, right? So we, understand, we say that, okay, let's think about those document corpuses where there will be multiple themes. And so when I use the word theme, theme is basically what you're calling as topics. So, Document have multiple themes, but one theme will dominate. Okay, this is the assumption I make on the Dorpus. That is, the weight on that particular theme will be very high. Okay? Now, if you see, if, it is, if I push it to the extreme, I recover LSI, right? Okay? LSI was that the only one topic occurs. The weights are, the rest are zero, isn't it? So I make it high. I make it high, not, but not to one. Since I, since I can't make it to one, you know, the math is very difficult and, uh, you know, uh, but, but the essential idea is that that is where the thresholding helps me in discovering those dominant topics, you know. So that's the intuition, if, if that, okay. Okay, so let's thank Chiru. Thank you.